All set. Good. All right. All right, just a, a few updates uh, on players. Eku Leota, so he uh, injured his pec in the game, uh, is going to get that repaired tomorrow. So most likely uh, that is season ending uh, from that standpoint. Um, Zach Calzada on his uh, repaired shoulder will get another surgery on that. That will be Wednesday. Um, and so they'll go in there and, and uh, repair uh, some of what had happened from before. Um, and so he'll be out. That'll be season ending there. Um, other than that, just as far as players go, um, guys should be available for this game. There'll be a couple guys that are day to day from the last game. And, you know, we'll see how this week goes as far as our preparation. Um, as far as Georgia, very good football team, 5 and 0. I mean, we've seen these guys play. Uh, defending national champions. Um, so overall, uh, just as a football team, you know, they're well coached. They've got, um, have had a lot of success um, with their program. And certainly you see that right now. You watch these guys on offense and look at uh, Stetson Bennett, start with him, the quarterback, uh, playing confident. Uh, he's, uh, in my opinion, a very good player, run, throws. Uh, can create and has shown that all through this season, last season. Um, he's got guys around him, uh, starting with the tight end, Brock Bowers. Uh, and he is a fantastic football player. He shows that, plays extremely hard, makes plays for him. They try to utilize him in a lot of ways. So uh, we know that he's uh, going to be a challenge. Darnell Washington, another tight end, big guy. Uh, both those tight ends and the personnel packages, um, they utilize him well. Wide receivers. Uh, McConkey and Mitchell, both those guys, and, and there's more, not just those two, very explosive on the perimeter with their offense. Um, defensively, they're top five in the SEC in every category. And, you know, they lost a lot of really good players last year. They've replaced those players with some really good players. And it starts with their front seven, those guys on the defensive line and the linebacker position play fast, physical. Um, and so those guys have done well all season long. Back end is very strong. I um, think those guys do a really good job in coverage, and then they're also going to be involved in the run game as well. So, you know, all across the board, a, a physical defense that we're going to face. Special teams, they blocked a punt against Kent State. Um, that's hard to do against anybody, but they were able to get that done. Uh, and then overall in special teams, again, I mean, they got their better players out there, and um, they play extremely fast, extremely hard, and um, they have confidence. You know, this for us is our first road trip. So that'll be an opportunity for us to travel and get these guys uh, on the road and we'll bus there. And, uh, you know, we'll get planned for our travel and how we expect that to go, all right, on our end of things before we go out there and play and get ready to go on Saturday. Uh, as far as our team, you know, Sunday was uh, a good day to come back, recover, uh, learn from the things from the previous game. And then Tuesday will be a physical practice that we get a chance to get back out there and really start planning for Georgia all right, and putting that together. So with that, questions? If you have a question, raise your hand, and we'll call me. Brian, Brian Stoltz, Alford Sports Rivals. Um, with Anders, Anders kind of uh, struggling in the last few games, have you thought about giving Evan a chance to, you know, especially on those long field goals that he can boom? Tell about Alex. Alex, sorry. Yeah. I was thinking Evan. Yep. <laughs> yes. We'll give him a chance. <laughs> yeah. Can we get him here? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I think we have we have faith in Anders. I know he is. Um, that's not um, anything, you know, from from practice. He's been very good in practice, and you know, Anders is a very consistent guy, and we still believe in him. Yes, Alex is available. Alex can go out there and have opportunities as well, um, but we still believe in Anders and, and know that you know he's a guy. He's played. He's played at a high level. Uh, we've missed a couple kicks. All right, that's very apparent, and you know we need to make those, and that's not anything that we don't talk about in this room. So, this week we just we're going to have to prepare a little bit differently, and you know even in the kicking game, you know just having ourselves obviously on the road, it's going to be different environments, so different things we have to do to get our guys prepared. Uh, but the one thing about Anders, I know that he will make whatever adjustments he needs to make to go out there and and be successful for us uh, in those moments, and he's done that. So.
Uh, Alex is ready, but Anders, you know, still has our full support. And, you know, this week is going to be a great week to get back on track and, and be consistent in the Georgia game. Tom Greenell, with that you out, I guess first, what, what did you see from Marcus Bragg uh, yep. stepping in there? And also just how do you feel about that edge position moving forward? Well, Eku's a big loss, and this has nothing to do with you know anybody behind him. It's just you know he's an emotional leader. Uh, he's he's one of the smartest football players we have. I mean, he, he is a guy that you know you want on your team. How he prepares, all the things he does, the respect he has of his team. So I thought Bragg did a really good job, and I think you know not getting all those reps. Eku and Derek are getting the majority of the reps, and then all of a sudden, bang, you know you're thrown into the mix, and so. He, he settled in well. He made some plays. We got beat on the edge a couple times, but he was you know, very close to being in the right position. And just that experience of getting out there and playing more as the game went on, he did better and better. So <clears throat> um, he and, and Derek, both those guys on the edge, um, and then Dylan as well, you know, getting, getting that ironed out on what we want to do uh, with that edge position, you know, that's what we have to work through this week. So you know, we'll see what that looks like as we put the packages in and, and who we have to utilize. But we want, still want to get the best front seven we have out there on the field, and especially against what Georgia does. They run the ball effectively. All right, they obviously can throw it. You got to get pressure on the quarterback. You give them too much time. Uh, those guys create out in the open space. So uh, we're still working through some of that. But I thought overall, I thought Bragg played well. Ryan, Jason, Auburn, four seven. You, you former quarterback yourself. For Robbie now going. First time he will ever played on the road, much less being a starter. How do you prepare for that as a quarterback, and, and what's important? Or is it just a matter of just going out and trying to handle it? Yeah, I mean, you try to prepare through the week and provide noise, right? That's really what you can do. And we're not going to bring in extra fans to yell at him and things like that. You're going to go into a hostile environment. You're not going to be favored, all right, when you get in there. And, and that's part of just the mental side of playing that position. But that goes for everybody. And then the noise becomes the factor. Uh, I think for Robbie, it's still continuing just to play within himself. He's learning, he's growing, he's developing. He did some really good things in that game. And, and he's a playmaker, and he can do more. And I think the confidence that he took away from the LSU game, you know, we have to build on that and then obviously be better going into this one. But uh, the noise is really the biggest factor. And then just, just handling uh, really every play when you're on the road. That's really what it comes down to. And I think that's the one thing from coaching that position and playing. It's just really just handle each and every play. Focus on the sideline, get the call in, communicate that, make sure that everybody's on the same page. Know that you're not going to be able to yell out information to guys. So you got to make sure that they're either it's a hand signal or whatever you have to do to make that adjustment. Um, keep everybody on the same page and then execute the play that's in front of you. And so uh, I think that's one thing I really appreciated about Robbie is I see that from him. I think his focus, I think the way he's handled himself, I think the maturity that he's showing, all right, each and every game is getting better. So we'll see how that looks this week. But um, we got to focus on us. We got to make sure that, that we're doing things on the offensive side of the ball that, that we can control and then just handle the environment when we're there. Mark Murphy, Inside the Tigers. We had a chance to look at the video. How did the interior offensive line do with three swaps on position? Yeah, I thought they actually did well. And I said it before, and it was a little bit of feast or famine. We had some big runs, and then we had some ones that we got. Uh, and it wasn't all just the inside guys, all right? It wasn't just all the offensive line. We just had some negative plays that uh, put us behind the chains, and some of those were self-inflicted. But overall, I thought Brandon played well. I thought the interior guys did a good job. I thought the old line, for the most part, um, you know, had a, had a solid game. You know, there's, there's plenty of things that – that we looked at that we can improve on. But overall, I mean, there were some real positive things in that game as well. The, the run game, uh, we were able to get that going. And then, you know, a few penalties and some other things that, that kind of slowed the momentum down. But other than that, uh, those guys, I, I thought, were doing some things up front that we hoped we would see and then stuff that we can build on moving forward. Tom, Johnny. Coach, uh, Johnny Cotton, ABC 3340 in Birmingham. Uh, just wanted to ask you about Stenson Bennett. Obviously not the most athletic guy in the world, but what makes him such an efficient quarterback for them? And ultimately, why has he been able to be such a winner since he's been there? I'm not sure Stetson would say that. He's a good player. I really, I'm really, i impressed with him. I mean, there, yeah, there's more guys that are bigger and more athletic and all that. Um, I was fortunate to coach a, a guy that wasn't very athletic that won more games than any college quarterback ever. And 
they would say the same thing about him. I mean, the guy's a winner. The guy's, he makes plays. Uh, he's plenty fast enough to run the ball. He's plenty fast enough to scramble around and make plays. Uh, he finds the open receivers. He's accurate. And, you know, he manages their offense really well. You know, and that's one thing that um, I've got a chance to see him and, and watch those guys for a couple years and watch him as a player. And he's done a very good job. So, uh, the really, you know, I don't see a whole lot of weaknesses in his game. I think he's got really good command of what they're doing. And he's plenty good enough to hurt you in all different ways. So you have to know where he's at. You have to do a great job in coverage. You got to do a great job in trying to pressure the quarterback. You got to do a great job when he scrambles of getting to him. Um, and you got to play the entire play with him, too, because that's what he does. So if you're going to let off, I mean, he's going to take advantage of that. You got to play the whole entire play against a quarterback like him. Uh, Brian, you can buy us one more on gmail.com. Um, well, two things. One, did you get a chance to review that um, that third down play or did they say the same thing when you sent it in? And then um, come up in the second quarter. Um, I haven't seen I haven't seen the result of the, from the officials and all that. Which one are you talking about? Uh, the, the face match was called on Derek um, in the second quarter. Yeah, I haven't seen what they came back with yet. Okay. And then the other thing is, where do you see your run game um, – where can you think you can improve the run game going forward, particularly against a tough UGA team? Yeah, well, I mean, I think number one starts inside, right? And that's that's number one. I mean, we can make improvements in a lot of areas there, but you got to start with your interior guys, right? Not giving up penetration. And to, like we talked about before, I thought they did a good job of that. Um, and we've improved in that area, but that's always where it starts, right? You're going to play a really good D-line. You're going to play a good front seven. They're going to bring pressure. Uh, eliminating that and then protecting our edges and finding ways to get on the perimeter as well. You know, that's part of it too. So your tackles, your tight ends, uh, that includes your wide receivers, just getting out there on the perimeter. Uh, that's a part of it that will help improve the run game. And then, you know, we have a quarterback that can also be a part of that. And uh, he becomes an option as well. And he's done some good things, you know, when we've asked him to run. You know, we had a few explosive plays with him and we got to keep building on those things. So, I mean, it continues to be, you know, things that we've done, but you know every single week we've got a little bit different scheme, a little different opponent. You know, who are the guys that are the strengths on their team? And, you know, on this defense, they're all the strengths on that team. So every single guy just doing their job and, and making sure that, um, you know, we provide our backs a chance to get started. And I think that's the one thing. Jarquez, uh, Tank, both those guys showed that. We get those guys started. You know, they can get yards. So we got to do a good job up front to make that happen. Second round, Brian. Coach Brian Wilson, number four. Um, the change in an offense game plan was obvious, and it yielded some very positive results for you all. Even though I just went, you know, the turnover was decided the game. Are you and the staff uh, encouraged? Are the players encouraged by this change of pace, and does that, uh, I guess, justify the change? Well, I think we got a chance to do some of the things we've been doing. You know, you look at last year, we, we ran some of those same concepts, and, you know, there, there's just a, there's a progression in in what we're doing offensively and so we we had a chance to open it up robbie did some really good things in the past game right we were able to balance it out that was encouraging um our young wide receivers that have been thrust into playing all right omari kelly has a big catch uh, camden brown's got a big catch and you know um Barr had a couple big catches in there as well so you know, those things, those things were good. I mean, that was encouraging to see some young players step up and do some things on the perimeter. We obviously have to be better than that uh, going to this game but uh, and every game forward because we weren't good enough to win the football game. But overall, there were some positive things in the past game that I thought helped us. I thought we did a couple things differently um, that we hadn't done this year, which gave us a little advantage uh, on the perimeter. And then, you know, the run game, like I said, just you know, some more consistency there when it comes to maybe eliminating the negative plays. That would be the key. All right, stay on, uh, stay on task, or excuse me, stay on track. And, uh, you know, we want to be efficient on first and second down so we can stay ahead of the chains and, and uh, eliminate some of those negative plays in the run game and then continue to keep the balance that we had. Yeah, uh, Mike Griffin from LAJC.com. Missouri had a lot of success pressuring, uh, playing a lot of press, man coverage, even some zero. How much of that have you done defensively? And then my second part of my question is Mike Bobo and his familiarity. How much of an advantage might that be in terms of his familiarity with personnel? 
Yeah, I, I think I couldn't give you the exact percentage of zero and pressures and man. We've done that. You know, we play man coverage. Um, zero, you know, we saw some of that in the last game as well. I mean, every defense is going to have a package, you know, where they're bringing everybody. So we do that as well. When we do it, it kind of depends on the game plan. Um, but yeah, Missouri did a good job. I mean, they, they played hard. Uh, they got some momentum. You could see in that team that, that they were, once they had a few plays and some success early on, you could see the shift in that football team. Those guys played hard. And, and we know from playing, I mean, we, we said before, they're a good football team. They showed that. They just came up short you know, against another really good football team. So those guys were playing extremely hard. Uh, and as far as Coach Bobo, um, you know, being around him and having him here and all that, yeah, sure. I mean, that's... I think there's familiarity with stabs from guys you worked with, guys you've been with before, um, and obviously he's there. And you know, Mike and I, I mean, got a lot of respect for each other, and he's helping that staff. There's a reason why they're successful. I mean, their their offensive staff is very good. Their whole coaching staff uh, does a great job. They've shown that. So, um, you know, and he obviously brings a lot of value to that program too, not just against us, but for everything they're trying to do. Because he's a you know he's a very good offensive coach, and you know, I think that place is, I know that place is special to him and had a lot of success there as a, as a coordinator before. So, you know, you can see some of those wrinkles that they're utilized and that he's helped bring to that program. Tom, uh, Tom I, I'm sure you'd rather not use him as much as you have, but just Oscar Chapman, what's the value of having a guy who just hasn't given up any punt return? Really? Yeah, he's, he's a weapon. Yeah, Oscar's a guy that we've talked about it. I really do. I think he's, the best, if not one of the best in the country. He really is. He's a every single day. Now, he's one of those guys, too, in practice. Like, that's not just what happens in the game. It happens in practice all the time. He takes tremendous pride in just trying to win the field position battle. And we had a few guys out, so it was really important in the last game that we had some hang time on the punts, that we put it in the right location so we knew where we were going to cover. And he did exactly that. So he gave our guys an advantage by what he did. And... You know, sometimes in games, the field position becomes a huge factor, right? And he's a guy that can put the ball in a lot of spots, and we trust in him to, to place the ball where it needs to be placed, and then we're going to cover it. And, you know, they didn't have any return yards, so that helped us a lot in that last game. Bill, Bill Cameron, uh, ESPN 106.7. Um, all five opponents have scored in the last two minutes, four of them in the last minute of the first half. Just talk about how that affects them, <clears throat> what that can mean yep. to, to a team going into the half. Yeah, that's a big one. That's probably one of the biggest, in my opinion, right? You don't want anybody to score, and you want to score points going into halftime. I think it's all about momentum. And, you know, that's one area. When you got the ball, it's not just about scoring touchdowns. It's just about scoring points, all right? Try to create some momentum, especially if you get the ball back in the second half. And that's one of the advantages of deferring and having the ball in the second half is hopefully you get a chance to end that half with some points and get the ball back and kind of come right back out and score again. Um, so... Being on the losing side of that, yeah, I mean, that's, you go in, they scored, all right, really, that's the momentum that they've got. And when you come into halftime, you got to find a way to get that back. You come back out in the field, they may have the ball again. You got to recover quickly, hopefully go three and out, get the ball back to your offense, and, uh, and give yourself a chance from that standpoint. So uh, that's a big one. You, know, you got to be at your best, really, in the last five minutes of the game, get your best players in there. All right, try to keep them from scoring and find ways to put points on the board. So that's a big factor, in my opinion, at halftime, giving up points or trying to get them. Um, well, speaking of like halves and things, what have you guys been working on, particularly this week with the second half issues? That seem to be the Yeah, well, I mean, looking at them, obviously, we look at every game and, you know, we, we know the reasons, right? We know the reasons. We look at every drive, there's a drive chart. Uh, there's a result, there's reasons why, and so we break it all down. You know, what was it? Um, where do we have a negative play? Where do we have positive plays? What was the end result on those drives? So uh, those are things that, that we've discussed as a staff. Those are things we discuss with our players. And, you know, to me, it's it's really comes down to, you know, trying to eliminate some of those negative plays and and then just being more consistent. And so that's play call, that's... You know, that's execution. That's all those things. I mean, it's it's really not one thing in particular, all right. That's just the glaring reason why. It's uh, things that we all have to improve on and get better at. And then, you know, our adjustments come out of half. I mean, we got to be able to find ways to 
continue to put points on the board. It's not just a half of football. You got to play all four quarters. Mark, I wanted to ask you about Zacchaeus Walker. He's yeah. Yeah, DJ's playing really well. He's starting to he's starting to get more comfortable out there. I think he's he's really kind of getting into a groove. It feels like at practice as well. His preparation, his focus, all those things. I mean, just learning the defense. You can tell he's more comfortable. Um, Z is Z. You know, coming off of his knee is better, and so now it's just a matter of getting him back in the rotation. And you've seen a little bit more of Jeffrey Emba. You know, Marcus has been out there. Uh, Jason Jones. Those guys up front are playing well. We got to get some of the other guys. In the mix, Z would be one of those guys that that would get in there, and he's had a few things, um, you know, that, that uh, some personal things, not in a bad way, but um, he had to handle some stuff, and so that's kind of impacted some of the playing time as well. But he's back this week; um, he's fine. You know, just some family things, and and uh, you know, we're excited to get him back going on Tuesday, and then see how we can work him into the rotation. Anything else? Yeah, two more. Uh, how tough is it when you get down to potentially having two scholarship quarterbacks, uh, particularly if both of them, one of them only having three starts and one being a freshman? What's your question exactly? I was saying, no, no, I mean, how tough is it to do that? Yeah, are we worried about that? What's that? I see, are we worried about that? Are having two guys, yeah, having two guys out there? On scholarship, uh, well, technically, we have three uh, because we did put Trey Lindsey on scholarship as well. So, um, and he, the reason why is because of all he does for our team, and you know he's out there and, and every single week. And this guy is a future coach, and he brings a tremendous, a lot of you know, tremendous value and a lot of really positive things to this team. Um, but as far as our quarterbacks, I mean, you got Robbie out there, you got Holden out there. We'll see where where TJ's at this week, um, and you know, those are guys that we're getting prepared and ready to play. You know, and for them, and just so you know, like their mindset, I mean, they're getting ready to play, right? They're going to go out there, and, and we can worry about the depth and, and those things, and that's certainly a concern when you don't have four guys like you want to have on scholarship that are available to play. Um, at the same time, as a player. All you're thinking about is just getting your job done. What do I got to do to go out there and and, uh, and help this ball club win? So um, those guys have been great. Holden's been awesome. He's been preparing every single game. He takes a ton of reps in practice. He's getting better and better. You can see that uh, those reps are helping Robbie as well. He's improving. So again, this week, between those two guys, we'll see where the other guys are at. Um, they'll keep getting those reps, and um, hopefully we see an improvement from each one of them uh, going into this game. Uh, Mike Griffith, the AJC Doug Nation coach. We asked Curtis Smart about this earlier. You, you know, day and time, every coach gets four or five years into the year. We've seen multiple coaches fired in the middle of seasons now. What do you think this is a byproduct? Is, is it salary? Is it just a new sense of urgency that we have in our society? Yeah, I mean, I think every program's different. I mean, I really do. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it has to do with, you know, anything bigger than that. I mean, just. Um, and I couldn't tell you each and every program's situation and where they are and, you know, those type of things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just that, that's just part of it. And I don't know if there's a, a better answer than that. Um, I know those coaches. I mean, I've seen coaches out there. There's good coaches out there. And, you know, but every program's got different things they're working through and, and what they want. And so um, I think that kind of just goes back to, you know where they are more than anything, and uh, and where those coaches are in that program. All right, good. Thanks, Thanks Thank you. Thank you.